Overclock an AMD Threadripper. How far can I go? I was chosen. Built within a system of purpose. Good. Not great. But when overclocked, how much better can I be? For this story, you'll want to stick around to the very end to find out. Let's get started. But for first time viewers looking to learn more about building PCs and other gaming related stuff, you should consider clicking the subscribe button notification bell to catch new uploads like this one the moment they drop. Doing this helps me grow here on YouTube and as a content creator, and for that, I appreciate you all to the moon and back. I was built at a time where similar 12 core CPUs exist. AM4, X299, 399. There were options to choose from, some faster and others much more expensive, but I possessed something the others did not, and that was value, price to performance. I was not necessarily inferior to them, indeed I was not the best. At the time, I was simply the most cost effective. But does that make me the best? Will an unlock multiplier give me the necessary edge to come within margin of my competition? Gaming, productivity, can an all-core overclock boost performance in both, speed up render and encoding times? To find out, the 1920X will be tested in two modes, Creator and Gamer. The former meant to take full advantage of the cores and threads available, and the latter intended as a healthy balance of both. Also included in the overclock is the DRAM, our 32GB of Corsair quad channel memory. With its rating of 3000 MHz, how far will the XMP take us, and what kind of impact will it have? Be sure to stick around to the very end of this story to find out. Let's begin. As you can see, the all-core overclock in creator's mode topped out at 4 GHz, and although I could boot in Windows and pass a Cinebench R15 run 
at 4.1 gigahertz, the overclock failed other stability tests running at that clock speed. So for the sake of stability, the multiplier was dialed back down to 40 with the voltage set to 1.4, which scored 2,534 points in Cinebench R15 with a max temperature of 74 degrees C and a score of 5,694 in Cinebench R20 with a max temperature of 79 degrees C. The overclock shaved off 13 seconds in Blender, reducing the render time to 2 minutes and 26 seconds in the BMW benchmark, while also shaving off 32 seconds in the Classroom benchmark, taking the render time down to 7 minutes and 24 seconds while reaching a max temperature of 82 degrees C. But now that was in creator's mode. What happens when I shift into gaming mode? Let's keep going to find out. silicone lottery. I am bound by the limitations of both, yet in gaming mode I was able to reach a stable 4.1 GHz on all 8 cores and 16 threads with the multiplier set to 41 and 1.48 voltage on the V core, with temperatures remaining well under 60 degrees C while gaming, which indicated that cooling wasn't our limiting factor. Zen 1, my architecture, that is what was holding me back the one constant that cannot be changed. A gem cannot be polished without friction nor perfected without trial. I have reached the ceiling of my potential. I have not won nor lost the silicone lottery. I believe to have embraced it. For in this form, at stock, I am as advertised. 3.5 base, 4 gigahertz turbo, 12 cores of raw computational power. And with SMT, which enables me to multiply each one into a virtual clone, I have the potential to utilize an additional 24 threads. I am the first of many high-end successors, born during the core wars of Zen 1 architecture. And to my competition, units that have shipped thereafter. It is true. I do not share their performance, yet they do not share my value. And for this, it is so. It cannot be otherwise. 
I am obsolete, but not irrelevant. X399, my platform, has an upgrade path of up to 32 cores and 64 threads. And so what form will I take next? Will it be one of performance? Faster RAM, higher core count, CPU? Or one of aesthetic, or I improve in look and general appearance? Perhaps even both. It is here the story of OG Threadripper ends. Or does it? For more PC gaming content, watch some of the videos on the left of your screen. Tap the round subscribe icon there on the right and come back and join us for more tech and other budget related stuff. And with that said, thanks for giving this one a watch. I hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.